Okay, hello everyone, and uh, I may be doing a video on this is a little different than the uh, other video that was just selecting handgun and ammunition to use for defense and uh, target shooting. This one here is uh, selecting uh, factors in selecting a pistol, and uh, factors in selecting a pistol, uh, we have to go through the intended use of the pistol practice in the budget, availability and the price of the ammunition, pistol fit and ergonomics, pistol size and weight, the recoil and the simplicity of operation, ease of cleaning, reputation of, uh, reputation of the manufacturer, reliability, warranty and availability of repair or aftermarket parts. Um, in my other uh, video selecting a handgun and ammunition that was for a defensive uh, uh, protection like in the home or something uh, this one here is just a general one so you know first you got to think about the intended use what are you going to use the gun for target shooting hunting personal protection uh, your price and uh, how much a budget is a 200 or 300 or 400 dollar gun availability and the price of ammunition are you getting a you know, a real rare gun that requires uh, ammunition that you can't buy at the store. You have to order, and it's more expensive. The pistol size and the weight. Uh, you know, what does the gun weigh? Uh, is it going to be okay for you to shoot? Um, the uh, how how easy it is to clean, or reputation of uh, reputation of the manufacturer. Is it a good manufacturer? Is he a lot of recalls? Is he take care of his customer? Uh, reliability of that make and model is it a reliable gun what type of warranty you know some warrant uh, some guns like a high point have a lifetime warranty a desert eagle has a one one year warranty some have less some have more and then aftermarket parts or repair uh, you know after warranties over our parts uh, easy to obtain like glocks they're everywhere so you know you probably wouldn't have a problem getting parts there's a lot of aftermarket companies that have the parts so let's go ahead and get into selecting the pistol. Uh, selecting a, you know, a handgun, as usual, they always use pistols sometimes. When considering purchasing a pistol, you should consult knowledgeable shooters, either, you know, somebody at the range, that's your friends, research possible test fire, um, you know, test firing, like at a range or something is great, rent the gun, um, and purchase the gun from a reputable bull dealer that's going to if there's a problem with that weapon or on that gun he's going to give you your money back or he'll get it over to the manufacturer um you're going to really uh that's going to be a good one that's purchasing from a reputable dealer um just like anything a gun a car and you, know, you want to have a reputable dealer uh now the next step is getting into cleaning but uh and i'm, I'm going to actually throw that up there um, usually gun cleaning, uh, you're going to need some gun cleaning equipment. You'll need some gun oil, a bore cleaner, eye protection, a small brush. People are using protective gloves now because of the lead content. Um, you know, are politically correct now. Before, they never were using that. You need bore brushes, patches, and uh, a soft cloth. Uh, the gloves are going to be a big one. Bore cleaners, you got to be careful on those. Some are very toxic. Uh, some will remove finish. Uh, any good oil, I yeah, I use uh, rim oil, which is uh, spray oil, and it's Teflon based. A uh, small brush, I would probably not use a wire brush. I would use a nylon. And um, yeah, well, they're talking about eye protection in case something splashes in your face. Let's go real quick here uh, uh, on the cleaning end of it. You know, the gun cleaning procedure here, we're going we're gonna to go to that, is you unload the pistol, inspect it, and disassemble it. Um, field strip it, which means you'll take it down to um, a, minimum, a, min a minimal amount of parts that you could do in the field with minimal amount of tools. Uh, first, you're going to want to do is on your brush, you're going to put a little solvent and you know, spray it on there. Apply the cleaning solvent to the board brush. Don't dip it. And then you will go ahead and run the brush, or brush completely through the bore 10 to 15 times. Okay. Then after that, run the brush through each chamber of the revolver. 
a cylinder. If you have a pistol, it'll be the barrel. Just clean semi-automatic pistol barrel separately with solvent. You'd be taking the barrel out of the semi-automatic. You'd have to take it down, and you'd be cleaning that separately. Same way they're doing here, but you would just, uh, this would be treated almost as the gun because it's just the barrel. Uh, next step, if you want to get into here, okay. Put a jag on a rod and patch on the jag. The jag is a little, oh, it's, let me get this here for you. It's this little red thing is the jag. As you, you put these patches through the hole. So you put the jag on the rod, and this is after the barrel had the wire brush with solvent in it, and you go in and out. See that? Pad, run patches through the board chambers until they come out clean. Use a brush to clean the crevices of the pistol um, or revolver. That's the nylon brush. You could probably put a little solvent on there too. Clean and lightly oil the exterior of the gun with the oil. Lubricate key points of the pistol. Action. I squirt it in the barrel. I pretty much saturate my gun. You know, it. it you know, I guess it would just depend. You know, um, I saturate the gun. Oh, and I like clicking all over too. <laughs> um, I pretty much saturate it. Um, pistol storage. Uh, you know, basically store the guns and the ammunition so they're not accessible. Store guns separately with the ammunition, and you want to store it in a cool and dry place um, when you're when you're basically putting them away. And you know that's that's pretty much it. Uh, and that's going to be, like I say, uh, you're cleaning and carrying and selecting a pistol. This is just a very short uh, overview. I have a more in-depth uh, video, so this is just a short one for somebody who doesn't want to listen to me talk for, you know, 20 minutes. Thank you a lot. I hope this was educational. And Hey guys, and today on this course here, I wanted to just go through a few things. This is going to be the tap, rack, and fire okay tap rack and fire just remember tap rack and fire T R F tap rack and fire and I call it tap rack and fire and if you follow this you'll be able to clear any kind of jam in at the range or when you're competitively shooting uh, the easiest way to do this is and I'm going to show you here and we'll go start with scenario one okay let's go through this first scenario uh, as you notice, it's empty. Okay, uh, let's say you go out to the range, you load your gun, and you go, and you shoot it. Nothing happens. Okay, tap it, rack it, fire. That's the bottom line. But just remember, like I say, if you're firing, nothing happens. You tap it, and then you rack it, and then you fire. That's the first procedure. Uh, that's if you're, if it's a failure to fire, they are to feed. Uh, mainly, it's a it's a misfire. Okay. Step two, process two, procedure two, or uh, problem two that you may write in. You may have your gun. You may actually have found it on the ground. Not sure if it's loaded. You may be firing. You may get a stovepipe. You don't care about this. Bottom line is, you take it, you rack, you fire. If it does it? You rack it down. And you fire. That's your second if you get a stovepipe or a jam up there like that. Scenario three. This is actually called a double feed. Okay, as you can see that. There's one uh, cartridge in there, another one sitting there. This is uh, one of the most difficult ones to clear, uh, especially on the Berettas because they don't, uh, they have very much of a feed lip. Now, let's say you go ahead and you shoot it, and that's what you get. You go back to your tap rack, you tap it. You rack it, nothing happens. Now, pull the magazine out. You rack it, rack it until it's clear. Put the magazine back in and fire. That's the easiest way. And in a minute, I'm going to go through a whole procedure starting with uh, going from the tap rack and fire, and we're going to go through the mist feed. And if that doesn't, you know, if that doesn't clear it, We'll go through it doesn't fire, and we'll go through pulling the magazine out. I'm going to show you that. That's going to be our next one. Okay, guys. Now I'm going to go through the whole procedure. As you notice, it's empty like this for training purposes. This is a magazine. You're out to the range. You put it in. You rack it, right? 
you, you fire. Nothing happens. What you want to do is tap it. You want to wrap it. Nothing happens again. Drop the magazine until it's empty. Put the magazine back in and fire. That's the procedure for the tap, rack, and fire.